Greetings, everybody. Welcome to Epic TV Women's Weekly. My name is Trey Cook, and with me in the studio today is the Ultra Trail Mont Blanc winner for 2012, Lizzie Hawker. Lizzie, congratulations on your Thank win. You. Thank you very much. Among your other many accomplishments, I just have to read through uh, just a, a, a small part of the list. You also hold the 24-hour road record. Mm-hmm which uh, I guess you ran 247.07 kilometers in 24 hours. Yeah. You also hold the Everest Base Camp to Kathmandu record. Yeah. In 72, 72 hours and 25 minutes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you are the 2006 100K world champion with a time of 7 hours and 29 minutes. And you had a 2011 marathon of 2 hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, in the middle of an ultra. <laughs> in the middle of an ultra. That is just phenomenal. <laughs> How did you get into uh, ultra marathons? Um, it, you know, it was really by chance. Um, people ask me when, when did I start running, and I, I honestly can't remember because I feel like I've always run. But it was only just for me, it was just a way to be outside. Um, because I kind of fell in love with the mountains when I was a child. so. I wasn't living in the mountains, so running was just my way of, you know, moving outside kind of thing. Um, never thought about joining a club or racing, really. So it wasn't until 2000 that I tried my first ever marathon. And then, you know, just did a couple. And then it was in 2005, um, I was visiting friends and they were doing a long track race in South Wales. and. I was going to see them for the weekend, so I thought I'd just try it, and then got selected to represent um, England for the 100 kilometer UK Championships. So that was kind of where the road stuff started, and I'd just read an article about the Ultra Trail Tour de Mont Blanc, um, decided that because I'd be finishing my PhD that summer, if I entered the race, I'd come out here for some climbing and do the race at the end. So 2005, that was my first mountain race. Okay. And, and just to uh, slide in there, PhD was not on the list of accomplishments that I read. <laughs> yeah, oceanography. I used to be an oceanographer with the British Antarctic Survey, so um, the polar regions are another passion of mine. Fantastic. At this point, you've now won five Ultra Trail Mont Blancs. Yeah, three full ones and two, unfortunately, shortened ones, but yeah. Okay. Can we call it a dynasty? <laughs> <laughs> What is your secret? Um, I just love moving quickly in the mountains, I think. This race is a special one for me because it was my first mountain race and kind of opened a door um, a door for me. So how many times have you run it? Uh, six times. Six times. You won five. Five and, and second tell me again, once. And, and a lot of times the course is modified because the weather is so bad like this year. Can you... Start off and tell us what the race was originally and how it got modified. So originally and it's why. 166, 168 kilometers, um, 9,600 meters of ascent and descent. And you cross passes around about 2,400, 2,500 meters. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a circle around Mont Blanc basically. So you're, you're crossing from France into Italy, into Switzerland and back into France. That's pretty cool, huh? So it's a real journey. Do you have to take yeah. your passport with you? You do. You do? <laughs> you do. <laughs> I haven't been stopped yet for a passport check, but it's in the regulations. You have to carry your passport. <laughs> okay. So that was the original race? That was the original race. And then because of the conditions this year, they had to modify the course completely. So they started and, and, us and the tell same. tell us what those conditions were. Um, a lot of snow up above, I think it was snowing probably above 1,000. 700 meters or so. Horrific the, conditions in August. Yeah, you, yeah. You're expecting a nice... Yeah, really yeah. unlucky. So, so that bad weather blew in, they changed the race to... Yeah, a 100 kilometer race, and it was staying all within France. Um, so we started, the first 40 kilometers were the same as the UTMB route, and then we kind of did, did a figure of eight loop, ending back in Chamonix. And in fact, uh, you know, you're running at night? And yeah, uh, we started still at, well, at seven o'clock in the evening, mm -hmm. so, um, and I think I arrived back at half seven in the morning, so it was literally, apart from an hour or two either side, it was all at night. 
Yeah, and there's been races in the past, not the Ultra Trail, I don't believe, but other races in Europe where people have died because of, you know, they're running at night, they get lost and... Uh, yeah, and I think weather conditions were played a part in those yeah. cases. Yeah, 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 yeah. They die from exposure and yeah. it's actually yeah. uh, a very dangerous uh, Yeah, uh, but I think scenario. for anyone entering a race like this, you know, you know what you're letting yourself in for kind of thing and the first priority always with anything you're doing in the mountains if you're climbing or running or whatever is to really know yourself and know where your limits are and then back off earlier if if you're getting in trouble right so what are some of the preparations that you take when you see some of this bad weather come in uh you know you're okay i can't run in just shorts and a t-shirt anymore what uh... yeah so um i ended up running in capris and a base layer but actually just kept a base layer on the entire um the entire race i didn't even need a a jacket but do you take a, a base layer and maybe a midweight yeah as well? there's um for this race in particular, there's quite strict regulations about what you actually have to carry. So you have to carry full waterproofs, so jacket, trousers, um, long running pants, um, an extra mid layer. Um, so yeah, you, you have to carry all the gear even if you're not wearing it. Okay, so you, you told me a little bit earlier that uh, you actually had some pain in yeah. this race. Yeah. And you won by 45 <laughs> minutes. Not four minutes, not five minutes, 45 minutes. It, it, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> what is your secret? How? Uh... I've got endurance kind of just naturally in me and I just love being in the mountains. So for me, moving fast in the mountains, it's just kind of natural. So the more you win, I'm assuming the more pressure there is on you to keep winning. Um, possibly in some ways. I, I think for me the most pressure just comes from myself because there's still um, challenges for me within the race. Um, so I try not to think about the pressures from the outside and just really still run my race and just to enjoy being in the mountains. With the Ultra Trail we talked about how, how you've been so dominant. But it seems like it's clearly you've done well in other races, but you don't seem to be as dominant in other races. What is it about the ultra trail that is different? Um, I think I think it's the longer stuff. This probably suits me, um, but I enjoy quite a variety of running. So both on the road, and the trail, and the mountain, and. Um, I enjoy going back to the short mountain races too, and just um, kind of a full out sprint. And, and you mentioned a minute ago that um, you really like the, uh, the longer races. Mm. What is it about the, the longer races that, uh, that appeals um, to you? I think just naturally I've got endurance. So for me, it's the speed that I've got to work on. Is there also an aspect of uh, you're just better at suffering than uh, the others? <laughs> um, I think you have to just be able to focus in on the moment and in a way you cut off to pain or you cut off to being cold or or that but you also have to um, kind of be careful. It's like in the mountains, I get used to cutting off to the cold because I always have cold hands and feet. Uh -huh. But in certain situations you really have to check yourself otherwise you will end up with frostbite. Do you have a favourite race of the year? I think it's probably like all together because each race you learn something new and you take that forward with you into the next race. You know, it just kind of all your experiences build you into the person that you become. Um, and it's not only about the racing, it's all the in between as well. It's the everyday, um, the everyday ins and outs and ups and downs. What do you love about ultra marathons? Um, I think it's a few things. It's it's the chance to be out in the nature, um, out in the mountains or desert or even on the road. <laughs> you know, just just being out, challenging yourself, really having a chance to push your own limits physically and mentally. Um, but within a race situation, you're also sharing that experience with all the other runners, the supporters, and you know, even people following. Um, 
and sometimes yeah sometimes that just means so much um being able to share the experience with so many people so what's next for you um i'm not sure i'm still thinking about plans for the autumn but possibly a race in the us in two weeks time okay what race would that be run rabbit run which is a hundred miler <laughs> And is it mountainous? Uh, yes, not not um, a mountain course like this one, but but pretty mountainous. Okay, hundred kilometers. What's the uh, hundred miles? Sorry, hundred miles. Okay, and what's yeah. the uh, climbing like? Um, I think it's about five thousand meters, so it would be a lot quicker than than a route like the UTMB. Okay, a lot faster running. All right. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. And Lizzie, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Epic Thanks TV Women's Weekly. Thanks for having me. And we hope to see you back soon. Wish you the best. That's our show for you this week. Uh, we'll see you again soon.